So now I've loaded my marker DNA and I can load the rest of my PCR sample to see how they did. I'm going to load about, oh, about five to six microliters of each of these samples. So I'll take each tube. Now the buffer, the PCR buffer that we used, actually already has a uh, loading die in it. That's what's causing the green color in there. So I don't have to do my mixing, uh, addition of loading die and mixing onto the pair film. If it didn't, I would have to repeat that step with each sample. I will just drop each sample in there. Switching pipette tips in between samples. Okay, so now I am loading my last PCR sample on the gel. And see, so now we're going to place this uh, cover on the apparatus and we will turn on. set the voltage to about, uh, we'll do it about 90 volts, and we'll run this for probably about 40 to 45 minutes, and then we'll take it and take, take a look at it and see if our DNA fragments are the right size. Now obviously when I go to analyze this and take a picture of it, I need to know what size I'm expecting for your PCR fragments. So if you don't know what size you're expecting, you should go back in the manual and see what length the fragment was for the PCR gene you're trying to amplify. And that's loading the gel. And again, we're loading our gel with our PCR products in order to make sure that A, we have our PCR product, and B, that it's the right size that we're expecting. Okay, so it's been about 40 minutes now, and we're gonna come back and turn our gel off and then we're going to check it and see if we have our PCR fragments. So I'm going to pause the power box and I'm going to pull my gel lid off. Grab my gel. Now the gel gets kind of slippery so the way I do it, I put my thumb and ring finger on either side of the gel and then my index finger is keeping the gel from sliding off and I'll hold it at a slight angle so that the gel slides into my index finger. And I am going to walk over to our gel documentation station, which is right here. Okay, so the gel itself, when we made the gel, we added a chemical called athenium bromide into the agarose itself. And that athenium bromide will bind with the DNA and cause it to fluoresce and ultraviolet light. And so my gel documentation station basically has an ultraviolet light here at the base of it and a camera to capture any DNA that we have at the top. So I'm going to place my gel inside the box. Turn the on. And we have some controls up here at the top that we can use. So there's a zoom in the middle. There's a fine focus right here at the bottom, and then this is the exposure time at the top. Our bands are fairly faint, I'm going to increase that by pressing this plus button. So we can see that some of our samples, and I will capture that image. And now I can come over here with the printer, and I'll the print button. So this is a picture of the uh, gel that we just ran and our PCR products. And to give you a little bit of a tutorial on how to read gel, so here's our standard marker length. It didn't come out real well because of the way I loaded it. There's sort of a double band where there should be a single band. 
but in this standard marker, the company that I bought it from sends you a picture of what the standard marker looks like with its listed sizes. And so I looked at that and I know that this band occurs at 250 base pairs. That one's at 500, 750, 1000 is that bright band that you see. And then from there it goes 1500 and 2000 and on up. Here across this way, each lane represents a different sample that was loaded. And so you can actually number the lanes across the top uh, to help us identify the different lanes. And then right here I've got a key of the labels that were on the different samples from PCR that I loaded. So you can see lane one was the marker protein. Lane two was sample number one. Lane three was sample number three C is what it was labeled. And you can see that some of the samples have a band that occurs. The, the band, if it does occur, is occurring at the same spot at 750 base pairs. If you go back and check your manual, you'll see that about 750 base pairs is the expected size for the GFP gene. So that's good news. That group did successfully amplify their PCR product. We did have a couple of lanes where there's no product being shown in lane 5, and in lane 7 and 8 there's no product. A couple of lanes, lane 2 and lane 9, do show product. It's at a little bit lower yield, so there are probably some issues with those, with those lanes. These lanes probably didn't work out because the PCR reaction itself wasn't is missing a component or wasn't mixed up properly. Uh, if those of you that, if, for, if, you're, if you happen to be the group that is missing your PCR fragment, we will go ahead, if you look in the PCR rack that we're using for our restriction digest, you'll see I've got a couple of other extra tubes yeah. labeled GFP yeah. on the top, and those are some successful PCR reactions that we prepared ahead of time. So if your reaction did not work, go ahead and use one of those other labeled tubes with GFP to complete the rest of your experiment.